Now, straight after breakfast, the Rip-Off Britain team are back with the second show of their week of live shows tackling viewers' problems while the show is on air. Yeah, Gloria Hunniford is uh, one of the team getting ready for the programme. Morning, Gloria. You've already had some results from yesterday, have you? We have. We're ready, willing and able. And we had t fantastic results yesterday, which, of course, is what Rip-Off Britain is all about. But more of that coming up in the programme later. And big thanks, of course, to all your viewers and breakfast who got in touch with us yesterday. As for today, well, as you can see, and and Julia are all ready to go with another packed show this morning. We're going to be meeting drivers who are just furious at money they shouldn't have had to pay, being taken directly off their credit card with no questions asked, so you can understand why they were angry. We have an experiment to see if haggling can work on the street. I like a bit of haggling. And we'll be talking to BT about its rollout of superfast broadband. Now, you can send us your comments and questions either on Facebook or email us on ripoffbritain at bbc.co.uk. So we'll be back spot on. 9.15 live. Indeed, Gloria. Thanks very much. 9.15 live this morning and every morning this week. I love the cheery way we got from Julia <laughs> as well. Thank you. Morning, Bella and Louise, and welcome to this, the second morning of our week of very special live editions of Rip Off Britain. Today we're going to be trying to solve your problems and also saving you money as well. So how about haggling on the high street? We'll be seeing if it works. And we have a great result to feature on the programme today, stemming from yesterday. So get ready for more advice that could really help you as well. Today we're going to be trying to solve your problems and also saving you money as well. So how about haggling on the high street? We'll be seeing if it works. And we have a great result to feature on the programme today, stemming from yesterday. So get ready for more advice that could really help you as well. Hello and thanks for joining us here at Rip Off Britain Live and thanks to all of you for the emails and messages you've been bombarding us with since yesterday's programme. I have to tell you, we had a massive response, particularly to the stories that we did about energy and water bills. Lots of you very unhappy about uh, what you've been charged. Forgive the pun, but we were flooded with messages on that. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> sorry, but we did have some great results we on did. the piazza, didn't we? Which yeah. is marvellous. And we'll hear more comments from viewers a bit later we on. We will. Too. Lots of comments, we mm. hope. Now, our experts are standing by packed programme today. BT will be here talking about broadband. And that just happens to be the topic that more of you have contacted us about this year than anything else. We'll also, of course, as I mentioned, be back outside. And, and uh, I've been uh, revisiting a former life, I suppose, because I went back into the newsroom to get the scoop from presenters Fiona Bruce and Sophie Rayworth on all of their consumer secrets. Mm -hmm. But first, if you suddenly get a charge you don't think you should have to pay, wouldn't you hope to be able to query it before any money is handed over? You think but so? But in one industry in particular, that is not always the case. And indeed, you all took that information yesterday because an awful lot of you did get in touch with us about uh, the item particularly that we did on energy bills. I think we really did hit a nerve there. We've got uh, Susan Burton-Ross emailing to say that uh, her billing problems with uh, water companies go back three years and she's been hounded by debt collectors for money that she does not owe. As she says, the, the calls and correspondence are ridiculous. They need to sort their act out. I think that's putting it mildly. I was going to say she's quite restrained. Yes. I don't think I would be. Well, Trudy Jeffries and da Dan Thompson were among those who contacted us after hearing Energy UK so confidently declare that smart meters would lead to more accurate bills. Well, Trudy says here that her smart meter doesn't work, has never worked, and her supplier doesn't seem to know how to fix it. Well, she's winning on all fronts, isn't how she? How often do we hear that? Meanwhile, after seeing the report that we did on scam calls, Neil Swindlehurst emailed us with really some fantastic advice to try and flush out whether or not a person calling you is a fraudster. He says, why not ask them some security questions? Like, for example, what's the first, seventh and last digit from your account number? And if there's any hesitation, just put the phone down. Well, I tell you, I think he's really mm. onto something there yeah. because, as you know, banks always insist that we have particular passwords that they have to um, indicate whether mm. or not we're genuine. Why don't banks have a, um, a password that we can say, what is that word, mm. so that we know whether or not they're genuine? Mm. I think um, that might put a stop to the yeah. fraudsters. You heard it, heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> now, no wonder Neil calls himself the savvy silver surfer, but I can't remember. We'll have more of your comments <laughs> later, but next, an update on some of the stories we've investigated in the past. 
Thanks, Julia, and uh, that's because I've got with me here in the studio Ranulph Scarborough, who's from that part of BT that's responsible for rolling out faster broadband across the UK. Ranulph, um, I mean, that is an incredible story, but let me pick up on that point that Eric was making there at the very end. You are BT, an international company. You have millions of pounds worth of technology at your disposal, and you are being beaten at your own game by a group of locals. Why are you not able to do what they do? Well, first of all, I'm full of admiration for communities that actually do that and try and solve the problem for themselves. Um, but I think uh, if we look at what those communities are doing, it's going to take a long time to bring these services across the UK if we leave it to... to but you've had years. Is it? Well, the good news is that already today um, in, in uh, uh, the UK, fibre is available to around 90% of the UK. Um, and um, uh, we're also working with government uh, and with local bodies to bring that uh, fibre to uh, through, through local projects with an aspiration to get to 95%. So that's rolling out. The technology is improving all the time. I mean, BT is leading with many of these technologies taking fibre into rural areas. Uh, our engineers are coming up with new ways and new approaches. So uh, I think we're on a journey. We, we've, not, we've not announced the end of this. We're pushing fibre further and further into remote communities and we're seeing how... Uh, that has a tremendous impact on them. But you see, you, you may be well doing that, but you're also spending an awful lot of your time, your money and your resources on ensuring that the country as a whole gets super fast broadband. Now, the majority of people in this country have got very adequate broadband speeds already. You seem to be leaving behind all of those people who, who have, what, two megabits if they're lucky? Why aren't you spending all of your resources on bringing everybody up to the same level before you start pushing ahead to get everybody to high speed? Uh, well, well, we are trying to get to uh, to the high speeds for as many people as possible. We are already. But you're not doing it quickly enough. I mean, you will know. You well, live in Cornwall. You will know that there are places, particularly in rural communities in Cornwall, in Wales, in Scotland, in the Midlands, in the Lake District, farmers these days, for instance, have to do so much of their work online, and they can't do it. They can't send in the the the, the details that they need to defra because they don't have high speed broadband. Why aren't you working harder and quicker to bring high speed broadband to them? Well, I do understand how difficult it is. I live in one of the, uh, or the 5% of Cornwall where I live that can't get fibre. What's your so, speed? Uh, I get about one and a half meg. There's, there's a real kind of ironic justice in that, I think, isn't there? <laughs> well, it does, it does help me empathise with the frustration of people that can't get it. But I think you've got to recognise this is an enormous engineering project. It takes a huge resources and determination. The collaboration we get from, from local authorities and communities is key. Um, you can't build this kind of network overnight. We've been on the journey... Uh, uh, since 2010. We've built to two thirds of the UK with our own funding, jointly investing with government and local bodies. We're at 90% uh, in the UK and we're continuing to roll out. We're optimistic at uh, helping the government hit its 217 target and more technologies and more capabilities and more funding and more determination will continue to help us get it there. Well, and I we've have shown, to tell you, there will we've be... shown in, in the eyes of Silly, there, for example. unfortunately, because we're running out of uh, okay. time now, but there will be an awful lot of people watching this programme who will say, yeah, when? Just give me a date. But thank you very much okay. indeed for that. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure there could be an awful lot of you who will want to tell us about your broadband problems because, as we said, we get more questions about that than anything else on the programme. And whether it's broadband or anything else, here's how you do it. Of course, you can always contact us by post. The address is Rip Up Britain, BBC Key House, Media City UK, Salford N50 2QH. And as you know, we'd love to hear from you. Now, how about this? When you think of haggling, you probably imagine being in some exotic market <laughs> abroad. Well, think again, because haggling is becoming increasingly common on the high street here in the UK. And what's more, we have found two willing volunteers ready to give it a go. Mm. <laughs> Great story. <laughs> well, I have to say, I think the last time I did any haggling was for Turkish carpets in Istanbul, and they turned out to be riddled with moths. <laughs> Win some, <laughs> lose some. <laughs> well, it's Gloria's turn to be outside this morning in our pop-up shop. Um, so what about you? And that really is a great yeah, reaction. And uh, I, I'm, I think it is what we're here for, isn't it, to get things uh, actually solved on the spot. Meanwhile, in the news today, it's claimed that uh, our increasing reliance on energy-hungry gadgets is to blame for our gas and electricity bills soaring by 600 million this year. So we've all got to, uh, oh. what, work by candles and play cards? Mm, and yeah, definitely no electric blankets. 
<laughs> anyway, and also in the papers is us. Those figures we revealed on the frequency of scam calls are reported in several. And you may also have seen some papers running photos of one very glamorous rip-off Britain presenter striding <laughs> past the studio. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. <laughs> That's because I was going to be outside and I knew it was going to be cold. Anyway. <laughs> The fashion police are at me again. <laughs> All this week, famous faces are going to be sharing their consumer tactics with us. And um, I went back to the floor of the BBC newsroom to meet two of them in one go. Well, it's fair to say that the news these days is very different from when I used to present it. Good evening. And, of course, as the headlines have changed, so too have the faces. The time is coming up to a quarter past six, our top story this evening. Well, here's the news. I've got Fiona Bruce with me. Fiona, how do you... Two news birds together! News bur <laughs> <laughs> what, how do you rate yourself as a consumer? Do you think you're uh, savvy? Do you think you're good? Indecisive. I think I'm a very indecisive consumer um, when it comes to what I'm going to wear. So what are the sort of things that really annoy you, then? What really annoys me, actually, is when you go into um, a shop, for whatever it is, and you actively want to buy something, and the person that you're trying to buy from is not that interested. And then I think, what is wrong with you? I've got some money to spend. <laughs> Don't you want me to spend it here? I mean, that drives me crazy. Sophie's in the city and joins us now. Sophie. Fellow news presenter Sophie Rayworth is now also the face of Watchdog. So as I caught up with her in the newsroom as well, I wondered what type of consumer she is. I would say I've got two pet hates. Supermarket pricing when it's incredibly confusing sometimes and you're often, I've got three kids, I'm in a rush and I want to buy, I don't know, fruit, loose fruit or packaged fruit, you can never work out which is cheaper. It's very, very difficult. You have to take a calculator to the supermarket and I really don't have time to do that. Um, and the other thing that really gets me is going on holiday because obviously with children you're confined to your school holidays and you just watch those prices almost double sometimes. Do you think you're good at complaining? Um, once I got a result, I complained about a holiday that was really not what they'd promised and I did get some money back. Not, a, not an awful lot, but and it was quite hard to get the money back, actually. Are you a good complainer if something goes wrong? Well, it, you know, am I a good complainer? I think the person I'm complaining to probably doesn't think I'm, I'm good at it. <laughs> Which but, means you probably are very good. Well, I mean... <laughs> You know, if you don't, if, if people don't deliver stuff on time, I mean, it, the, 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 my real bugbear is when you have to wait in all day for someone to deliver something. I cannot stand it. But, but also, you just stand up for your rights. Basically, if something is not fit for purpose, then, then it should not be sold. I mean, that's the bottom line. So, basically, stand your ground. Stand your ground. There's a joy to be had from complaining. Isn't and you, it never just? Know, you never know, <laughs> you might get a result. <laughs> that's it from the newsroom. Good night. I like oh, that. And newsroom that. girls always uh, on the ball, you see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you've been sending us plenty of emails and questions <laughs> as we've been live on the air this morning. It's for you, first of all. I'll sub this down a bit, but Mike Hannigan from Cambridgeshire, he has had trouble with his builders. Very briefly, he paid the builder up front, which might have been the big mistake, paying on credit cards and cash. He's not getting in touch with the builder, and when they do, he's giving every excuse under the sun. Can they do anything? Sarah, I've got one for you um, from somebody called Reg Smith. He wants to know how travel from £285 to over £800 after he had a knee replacement, and he thinks older people are being ripped. Lovely comment that's come from Alan Smith after we were talking about passwords for banks. Well done, mm. Barclays. <laughs> Even thought I'd hear myself saying that. You see, it's results and challenging all round. And of course, don't forget haggling. Uh, sadly, that's where we've got to leave it for this morning thanks to absolutely everybody who's taken part in today's program we'll be back spot on time tomorrow morning at 9 15 and emerging is a common theme of food and indeed it, we've got some pretty shocking undercover footage revealing how some restaurants are flouting rules that well it's no exaggeration to say it really could be a matter of life and death and we'll be exploring what happens when you leave a tip in a restaurant will it end up with the right person all that and strictly's cheeky chappy anton dubeck See you for another busy morning at 9.15 on BBC One from all of us. Bye. Bye-bye.